Hi there, it's Kanika. This is an episode from the That's Total Mom Sense archives, which date back to 2019. If you're new here, there's a chance you haven't heard this one yet. And if you've been tuning in since the beginning, you'll surely be able to gather new ideas this time around. I know I have. I hope you enjoy it. On to the show. Hi, I'm Kanika, and you're listening to That's Total Mom Sense, the podcast, where I interview public figures on their life lessons in parenting, legacy, and built-in sixth sense. Hey, what's up? I'm Kelly Rowland, and you're checking out That's Total Mom Sense. Hi, this is Chelsea Clinton, and my experience on That's Total Mom Sense was fantastic. It's me, Bobby Brown. Can't wait to share my story. Thank you to my guests, brand partners, community, and you for making the show possible. Episodes release every Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can join my tribe by logging on to thatstotalmomsense.com and by following me on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at Kanika Chadda Gupta. Now let's dive in to today's episode. As the adage goes, nine months on, nine months off. For a woman, we're, when we put on the baby weight, it takes about nine months, and it takes about nine months to lose the baby weight. But for many of us, it's not that simple. And imagine having the added pressure of being in the spotlight on TV, where a camera sadly adds 10 pounds, um, all while juggling life with a new baby. And this is someone who has done it all and more, Mara Schiavacampo. She is a four-time Emmy-winning journalist, a chart-topping podcast host, and a best-selling author of her book, uh, Thin Spired, which is a weight loss memoir of how she lost 90 pounds after her first baby. She's here to tell us her story and give us some tips along the way. Mara, thank you so much for being on That's Total Mom Sense. Thank you, thanks for having me. (laughs) It is such a treat. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about who Mara is and your childhood. Mm, That's such a a layered question. (laughs) So um, I'm originally from Maryland. Uh That's where I grew up, right outside of D.C. Um, My father worked for the World Bank. My mother is a professor. And um, because of my father's job, we traveled a lot uh, and we lived overseas. And we weren't living in uh, we were living in developed nations, developing nations. Mm. And so, you know, they weren't. it wasn't like we were living in Paris, you know, we lived in Somalia, we, you know, before I was born, my parents spent some time in the South Pacific. Um, the youngest of three, uh, I'm the baby. Yeah. And, you know, it was just always a very, there was always an adventure, you know, I grew up with all these adventures without really knowing that I was having a unique experience. Mm. Uh, you know, I remember I would go like warthog hunting in East Africa with my dad when I was wow. six years old. And we had to like get up at five in the morning. And I remember like watching them like butcher the warthog in the field. Um, and these were, I mean, I remember seeing my dad's friends shoot antelopes. And these were, and I'm, I'm a, such a huge animal lover. So like, I'm not into hunting like today, but yeah. it was just part of my upbringing. And I didn't really realize how unique that was until much later, but it always gave me this thirst for adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, so I said yes to pretty much everything. I just want to like drink life. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. And tell us about your last name, Schiavo Campo. Schiavo Campo. It's Italian. Yes, it's Italian. So my father is first generation um, from Sicily. Uh-huh. And he met my mother here. Uh, and they're an interracial couple. So my father is Italian, white, European. Yeah. Uh, my mother's African-American. And they, they met um, and started dating in the late 60s. They just celebrated their 50th wedding Good anniversary. For them. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Yeah. And they were, you know, oh, they met the in Boston, one. which is okay. not like the most racially sensitive city in the country. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, they they went through it, um, but they they went through it and made it through. So, they're, wow. They're, they're, and they're such a colorful couple. Like, they love hard. They fight hard. Yeah. You know, Sicilian <laughs> and a black woman. Yeah, yeah. You lose <laughs> fireworks there, boy. <laughs> Good and bad. I love it. Right. <laughs> oh, that's great. But um, did you feel like, you know, growing up with a family like that and that kind of foundation when you were living all over the world, um, what was it like? You know, I, you know, the thing with kids is that they don't know what's unique or unusual because right. that's all they know. Mm-hmm. So what's funny is that, you know, the things that I 
remember about that time is that I was always annoyed that we were traveling. Right. You know, I wanted, like, we traveled, like, every break. If there was, a, you know, Christmas break, summer, we were always traveling. And mm -hmm. I remember always being annoyed. I wanted to be home with my friends or to, you know, when you're living abroad, you can't get, like, candy. Like, that, those are the things a seven-year-old remembers. Yeah. It's like, I can't buy now and laters here. They don't <laughs> sell them. <There's> a... <laughs> uh, you know, I can't watch the TV shows I like. Right. So that those are the things that I remember, like, airplanes making me plane sick. You know, those kinds of things. But there were all these much more profound life um, lessons that I was kind of getting through osmosis mm -hmm. that revealed themselves to me later in life. So I'm, I'm incredibly tolerant. Um, like one thing that was clear to me always is that we're all way more alike than we are different. Yes. Way more alike yes, than we are absolutely. different. We all want the same things. It's true. Um, and that just, I kind of always had that because I always saw that. Mm -hmm. So the things that a lot of people, like we're now, I feel like we're in an age of tolerance, yeah. which is really beautiful. Um, in some ways we're in an age of tolerance, in some ways it's the exact yeah. opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of like understanding gender fluidity <clears throat> or you know all of these things, that but that tolerance was always in me. And I feel right. like it's because of you know the things I saw and the people I interacted with. and. Absolutely. Wow. That's that's really amazing. Um, so why journalism? Why did you go into that field and that path? Uh, I wanted a career where I could write okay. and where I could travel. Mm. And when I looked around and tried to figure out, okay, where do those two things intersect? Right. It was journalism. Oh, that's it was, so great. You know, it was clear as day. So I, I feel like we have a few parallels. I also come from a TV broadcast background. Um, I was with CNN in India, and when I moved to, um, to New York in 2011, um, at that time I was looking for to, to transfer to work to, for the CNN here. And I remember meeting with the bureau chief, and he was like, you know what, we're doing a round of layoffs soon, so there are no jobs. Um, I stayed with some cable networks and then eventually switched gears and started my own company. And I'm happier for it. I, you know, it's it, like in retrospect, I'm, I'm very glad that I, I made the decisions that I did. But I've, I've seen that grind. And you are one person who has made it to the top. You know, you're working in New York, mm -hmm. the number one network um, in the States. And it's like, it's incredible that you reach that. So, um, so tell us about that journey. Um, you know, things always look different from the inside and they always feel very different from the inside. So from my perspective, it's always been like head down on the grind, uh, get the work done. And, you know, it's I've been driven very much by the work. Yeah. So to, you know, when I hear people introduce me like four time Emmys and like it, it, it doesn't, it, that's, that hasn't been my internal experience. You know, my internal experience has been like working like a dog. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that's just what it is. Like, it's not glamorous. Um, it's not sexy. It's work. Yeah. And so if you don't love the work, like people don't realize, like when you're watching somebody live on television at seven in the morning and they're in a different time zone, it may be two in the morning where they are. Right. And they're in the cold, in the dark, in the yeah. middle of nowhere where like some bear attack happened, <laughs> right? <laughs> And like oh I, I had to get up at midnight and like put lashes on yeah. and like, like people like there is a grind. It's right. a grind. And yeah. then when that live shot is done, you're on an airplane and you're going to the next place and the next thing. So that's been my focus really is just the, the grind. Yeah. And how has that changed you? I mean, now you're a mom of two. So you've you've dealt with that challenge yeah. and now you've taken on a new one. What's that like? I mean, I feel like it really prepared me very well for parenthood because, mm. you know, when you're flying by the seat of your pants, for 15 years and it's also like it's a physical job like you know you're helping cameramen carry gear and right. you're you know traveling a lot which is very like it takes a physical toll on you so those things actually really prepare me you know very little sleep and working under pressure and so I kind of now like it's hard to phase me yeah like you know that's great you know kid like throws up on the floor or all over me or in an <laughs> uber it's like all right like let's like clean it up and on to the next thing. Like, yeah. It's just, you <laughs> Good just for keep you. it moving. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you've seen it all. And I've so you just roll with the punches. Like I've put, I've put makeup on in the middle of a hurricane. Like I've just, this, this, oh, can I curse? Yes. Like the shit that I've had to do for work, you know, yeah. like in the, been in the Congo for five days without a shower, like, you know, 
Oh my gosh. Dealing with the toddler is kind of like quaint and fun <laughs> in comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have their moments where they're so, so sweet. They're you know? so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I always say, if they weren't so cute, they'd be homeless. Like, I, the reason I, they're so cute is so that they can continue to have parents. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but then there's this narcissistic element, too, right. right? Where, like, I mean, my husband, our third child, he just sits and admires him because he's a replica. Right. And it's like, this is just narcissism right now, you know? Like, <laughs> you get to see. Yes, like he's fresh, cute, but come on. Yeah, clean version of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they're so adorable. Yes, they, they're yeah. They're so adorable. They really just surprise you. And um, I mean, they're the most innocent, loving. They bring out so many different emotions in you that you didn't know you had. Yeah. Like that much love that you didn't know you had. Yeah, you and know? it's a love without ego. It's a very selfless, pure love. It, it kind of, and it recalibrates everything else. Because yeah. once you know that, you see your deficiencies in the way you love other people. Yes, it's true. It's true. When it's conditional or yeah. complicated. Right. Absolutely. Um, so tell us about your motherhood experience. Yeah, that's been, it's been interesting because, you know, I think we all have this perception that um, you, you have this natural instinct and as soon as you find out you're pregnant or you have a baby, um, you're a mom. Right. And I guess technically that's true, right? right? But my experience in having my first child was that I was a woman who had a baby. Yeah. I didn't feel like a mother for probably like 18 months, like to two years. Wow. Like that beginning phase for me was really tricky because I did not feel instantly connected to my child. And mm -hmm. I was not instantly selfless. Like, you know, if I saw a booger, I still was like, ew. Yeah. You know, like now, like with my son, like I'll just pick it up with my hand and like right, flick right. it away, right? Exactly. Like I, there's no grossness. Like I would suck the snot out of his nose. Like yeah. all of that stuff is gone. Nose feet of that shit. But it didn't, exactly. When I first time I saw nose feet, I was like, are you this is kidding? Just disgusting, yeah. I'm supposed to suck the snot yeah, out of so my effective, mouth. Yeah, so effective, but. So effective. Yeah. I'm like, it's a job then. So um, that, but that was a, that was a transformation that took time. Yeah. And um, the, the distinction was so clear when I had my son. You know, I had been, now been a mother for four years. Mm. So the moment he was born, like I bonded with him and I was on it immediately. And like two days, you know, he was like two days old and my husband said like, God, you're so different with this one. And I said, it's because he was born to a mother. Oh, wow. Like my daughter was born to like some lady who had a baby who right. did not know the first thing about what that meant. Right. He was born to a mother. Wow. So the connection was totally different. Yeah. Um, and so that was really very revelatory for me is that like you have to kind of come into that role. Yes, absolutely. That's that's so honest of you to share. Um, and I think that as women, it's kind of thrust upon us that like, OK, you get married and you become a mom, you know, and you're just going through the motions. Right. But um, what about the the arc and, you know, the the feelings you face as you're going through it? It just like one day you're in the hospital. Right. You know, pregnant, and then the other day, it's like it's you instant. have this third person. Yeah, and it's for life. Right, you know? right. You created this human that's going to be with you forever. Right. So yeah, it's uh, really well, what transformative. What was like jarring to me as well is that like the moment that baby pops out, like all the love that society has for pregnant <laughs> ladies, like it's gone in an instant. <laughs> like nobody's offering you their seat on the subway. No, I needed the seat more <laughs> after I'd had the baby than right. before. Like right, right, then right. your body is like wrecked and yeah. you're like bleeding and like your uh, nipples are bleeding. It's like a disaster. Right? That's why I needed to sit. Yes. But the moment that baby's out, it's like, oh no, sister, you're yeah, on your own. Yeah, exactly. It's not about <laughs> you anymore. Yeah, it, yeah. That's that's the unfortunate truth. Very, very true. Um, so how did you get through those tough times? You know, I didn't I didn't consider them to be tough in, in the moment. Mm -hmm. in, in hindsight, I see how I was really struggling with my identity and with kind of it, taking on a new role and being comfortable in that role and also learning how to be a parent like right. you you learn unfortunately it's like you know you learn by making mistakes mm -hmm. and so like this is kind of a funny example but I remember once packing for a trip with my daughter and I was packing the baby soap and I was like they have soap at hotels why am I going to bring baby soap right and then I'm giving her a bath and she starts screaming and she's like, my eyes, my eyes. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I was like, like, this is why we need baby soap. <laughs> I was like, because she got regular soap in her eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, it's just Aww. things like that where like you just, you learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's true. Oh my gosh, packing for kids too. Oh, it's the worst. It's everything under the sun because yeah, these things happen. It's the worst. Um, so then tell us about like um, weight 
and the issues around that. Yeah. I think that, I mean, that's something that all women face. You yeah. can think back to, um, you know, our adolescence or even before that, um, tween days where we just think about weight, obsess about yeah. weight. Um, yeah. Well, you know, it's such a kind of an unfair paradox that women are expected to keep, you know, their same weight through, like, from pretty much from their teenage years through death, yeah. right? <laughs> When you have all the, these childbearing years that take, they have your body, so much is demanded of your body, mm-hmm. but the expectations don't make any room for that, right? right? There's there's no allowance for what you're going through during those years. You're just expected to still adhere to the same standards. Right. And it's really, really, really unfair. Mm-hmm. It's um, impossible. <laughs> it's an unfair and it's a really high standard. Yeah. But... A lot of us still, for better or for worse, want to meet that standard. Right. And so I try not to be judgmental of women who are like, no, I want to lose the baby weight right away. Like, ideally, we'd be in a, in a situation where people would give themselves a year, two years, and feel great about that journey. But that's yeah. not always reality. Yeah. And so I feel like we, all, we have to have these conversations based on what's real, yes. right? Because yes. like I met a woman, I was shopping, I was at the register, she had her baby with her, the baby was tiny, tiny, mm-hmm. and I was like talking to her about the baby and she was buying jeans and she starts crying at the register and she was like, I thought I'd be in my regular clothes oh, by now. Yeah. And so like, that's real. So yeah. let's have a conversation like based on that reality. Yeah. But, so the reality is if you do want to quote unquote snap back mm-hmm. very quickly, it takes a tremendous amount of work. Right, right. Tremendous. Yeah. Because at the same time, you're caring for this new baby. It's true. And especially if you're breastfeeding, which is like, oh, it helps you lose weight. Yeah, it makes no, everything yeah. harder. Yeah, yeah, it, it totally does. It's like, yes, your uterus is shrinking, but you're also, your caloric in, intake is increasing because you really are feeding too now. Right, you know? yeah. And in order to have like, Thick, frothy milk. You right. Know, you gotta you gotta eat more calories. Yeah, and yeah. you see it right away. Like when you start to cut calories because you wanna lose weight, but then mm-hmm. you see your milk output dropping. Yes. yes it's yeah. like shit. Well now I have to eat more so that I can produce enough milk for my baby, but then it's gonna stall my weight loss. Like exactly. it's a whole yep. thing. Yeah. So yeah. if you if if someone does wanna do it, and I don't judge those who do or those who give themselves space, mm-hmm. um, you just have to be really, really, really committed to it. Right. And you also need help. Because yes. you need someone to watch the baby so that you can, you know, have time to work out. Yeah. Um, you need to meal plan and cook. And, like, you have to do all of those things while you're trying to take care of your new baby. Right, right. So it's, like, it's a lot. It's a struggle. Um, when did the Inspired even come to your mind? Um, because, you know, speaking from your own experience, how did it come to be? That yeah, you that, to share that was journey? all very, very organic. So mm-hmm. after I had my daughter, I wanted to... Um, lose a baby weight Mm -hmm. just because I didn't want to buy new clothes, right? I was like, I want to go back to work in my same clothes. Like, that was my goal. Right. And so it was a different weight loss experience than, like, in the past where weight gain was always tied to, like, a shame, right? Mm -hmm. Of, like, oh, I'm lazy or I'm whatever. And this was like, no, I have a really good reason for having gained the weight. So for some reason, removing that shame kind of freed me. Oh, yes. Um, And I was like, okay, well, I just have to figure out what's going to work for my body. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I figured out, you know, a couple things that worked for me. And a lot of what I learned was very counter to what society tells you. You know, one of the big things that we always hear is everything in moderation, everything in moderation. Well, for a lot of us, certain foods have addictive qualities. Yes. And so you can't eat them in moderation any more than Good an alcoholic point. can have a drink in moderation. It's an it's an unattainable standard. Right. And so once I realized that, I was like, oh, there are certain things that I cannot have in moderation ever. I'm always going to have an abusive relationship with this thing. Yeah. So then I have a choice to make. Do I still want to keep it in my life or do I want to eliminate it completely? Okay. And I decided to eliminate certain things completely. Okay. Now, there's a school of thought where people say, okay, well, restrictive diets don't work or they're not good for you psychologically. That's like, God bless people who feel that way. Mm-hmm. My experience has been that eliminating certain things has been tremendously freeing because I'm not trying to have a little bit of something that is always calling me and always beating me. Uh, it's just gone. Yeah. It's just it's just not there. Wow. And so that was the, the big thing for me. So once I eliminated those things, I pretty much got to, it's like a Mediterranean diet, it's, and it wasn't a plan, but that's what I kind of settled into. Okay. Um, so protein, mainly fish, um, you know, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, mm. like heavy, heavy protein. Okay. Um, very little, like, Actually, no flour, no white pasta, and no nothing white. I call them the white devils. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. White, <laughs> white bread, uh, white rice, white potato. Okay, 
okay, pretty much gone. Um, and so that worked. And so I lost the baby weight really quickly. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe I can like try for a little bit more. And right. so I ended up losing 90 pounds. My goodness. But how long did it take you? It took two years. Okay. So okay, when you yeah. did the math, See? it was half a pound a week. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a goal in mind that I want to lose 90 pounds by X? No. Okay. No. And if I did, I would never have, I don't think I would have embarked on it. It okay. would have seemed too big and impossible. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to lose baby weight. They were all these small increments. You know, that was the first one. I just wanted to get back to my pre-baby weight. Got it. And then from there, I was like, oh, well, it would be nice to lose three more pounds. And then I was like, oh, well, it would be great to get under 170. And mm. then it's like, oh, it would be nice to get here. And so they were all of these small goals. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think I ever had a goal that was bigger than about three or four pounds. Oh, wow. Okay. So then, you know, if it took me a month and a half to get there, you know, it was like, okay, because it was such a small goal. Right. So I'm a big proponent of small goals. Like yes. 10 pounds, is it, it, that's a big goal. Like, yeah. It's chop true. it up, you know? Right. No, that's a, that's a really good tip. Did your news producers mm -hmm. put added pressure on you. Yeah, this is a question I get a lot. Actually, no, never. I never got pressure oh, wow. at work to be smaller. And okay. part of the reason that I think that is, is because they hired me that way. And so I was always kind of like on guard, like waiting for somebody to say something about me because I knew exactly what my response was going to be. Like, look, right. this is what you bought. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So don't be yeah. trying to change it now. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, and I mean, it's yeah, it's your work ethic and who you are. Right. It's not about the appearance anyways. But yeah. Right. So, no, I never got any. And I actually felt very connected to our viewers because like the average woman is a size 14. Right. So I, the TV world, that's not real life. You know, yeah. like. Yeah. Everybody on TV is like a size two. I know. Like, that's not real. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I don't know how they go through their life just eating salads for lunch right. all day. Yeah. I do not want to sign up for that. Um, okay, yeah, so that's that's really good to know. So they were very supportive. I, mean, I wouldn't say they were supportive. It was just kind of indifferent. Okay, okay. You know, like, that's who I was, and everybody always accepted it. Yeah, but then when you did lose that weight, did you feel like a whole new woman, confident? Like... Yeah, I mean, I d you definitely get a lot of positive attention when you lose weight. Mm -hmm. um, it does take a, you have to lose a lot of weight before people will notice. So, okay. so if you are on a weight loss journey, don't get discouraged when you've lost like 15, 20, 25 pounds mm -hmm. and people haven't said anything. Right. It takes a lot for people to notice. I had lost like 40, 50 pounds before most people oh my goodness. noticed. Okay. But then it was like a flood. Like when right. people started to notice, everybody noticed. Yeah. And then that's when I was getting a lot of questions mm -hmm. from my coworkers. People would email me on Facebook. Um, just a lot of people were asking me the same things. Right, right. And so that's when I decided to write the book. I was like, well, if people want to know, I want to share it. Right. In right, a really right, right. honest way. Yeah. So tell us some of those trade secrets. How did you do it? Yeah. So a lot of what society teaches us about um, weight loss is bullshit. And mm -hmm. it's bullshit based on an industry, mm -hmm. right? So there are certain things they can sell you and there are certain things they can't sell you. Yeah. So it, they can sell you fitness and they can make a ton of money off fitness. But the reality is that exercise is not very crucial to weight loss. Is it the 80-20 rule? 80% diet, 20% exercise? Absolutely. Okay. And even like personal trainers will tell you that. Right, and that's right, their right. field. Yes, yeah, it's true. It's true. So the idea that, I mean, people will say, well, I can't work out because I just had a baby or they have some physical limitations and injury and they start out from this discouraged place. Mm. I can't exercise, so I'm not going to be able to lose weight. And that's not the case. If you clean up your diet, you will see results. Yes. Diet is everything. It's true. Nutrition is everything. It's true. So that was the biggest lesson for me. Okay. Because I thought, like everyone else, I'm going to have to, like, kill myself in the gym. <laughs> and the single biggest difference was what I did in the kitchen. Yes. Okay. That's it. So then let's, let's bring it to the kitchen. What were the changes that you made? Um, so uh, eliminating everything white. Yeah. Um, I cut out wine, which as an Italian, like they might revoke my citizenship. Oh my God. <laughs> I will not be allowed back in the country. Um, but wine was my undoing yeah. because you can drink so much so fast. Yes. And yes. it's like drinking soda or eating butter. Like it, there's no nutritionally redeeming value in wine, period. Yeah, it's true. I mean, red's better for your heart health, but uh, it's not yeah. good for your waistline. Yeah, no, no, no. That's <laughs> 
Yeah, it's a moment on the lips, you know. Yeah, it's true. It's like you got the sacrifice. So yes, that was a true. huge sacrifice. It mm-hmm. took a lot to get over that. But now I literally have not had a glass of wine in like four years. Okay, wow. I drank, but yes, just not wine. Not just not wine. Okay. So that was a big Because that was thing. something that had more of an addictive. Well, you just, you. it's so easy when you're being social yes. to go through a bottle of wine. Right, right, It's right. without even thinking. It doesn't even have to be, it can be a Tuesday night. Yes. Um, so that was my undoing over, I'm doing all this work, I'm doing everything right, and then I'm blowing it on one or two nights with friends. Right, and right. And I was like, no, something's got to give. I yes. Gotta, I gotta give up the wine. Yeah. It was painful, and, it was hard. Yeah, I'm sure. A glass is about like 300 calories? Or? You know, I don't even know yeah. anymore, but it was but killing me. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel you. Um, I think it's uh, important that we realize that we often drink our our calories yeah. and so you know the lattes the yes yeah the whip and no you yeah. just can't no. um, that's like the first thing that needs to go because it's not satiating right. either right yeah and when you start to I mean it all depends where people are coming from right I started with such a terrible diet of like processed foods mm-hmm. um, always eating out and yeah. never exercising right that for me I, I saw a huge difference in how I felt that I was like oh my body actually needs real food that hasn't been processed. And I feel so different when I'm getting that. Yes. And I actually need water. Yes. And like, I actually need these things. The difference, what, like the, the quality of my sleep, the quality of everything changed mm. when I changed my diet and started exercising vigorously. Cause there's a direct connection between intensity and, and the benefits yes. of exercise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I noticed such a huge difference. Wow. So if you're someone who has a pretty good diet, you, maybe you don't notice the difference as dramatically. Right. But right. I, for me, it was like night and day. Yeah. No, I, I just need to sign up and do exactly what you did because I think um, motherhood has caused me to fall into a slump. Mm. Um, I'm better now, but I had twins and then I had another baby after okay. that. Um, all within two years. Wow. So yeah, it was That's just a, lot. a fast track. Yeah. So like not only did my body take a beating, yeah. um, I just, I didn't have the time nor the energy to work mm, out and, yeah. and think about me. And so like mm. oftentimes, um, you know how you have so many different uh, doctor's appointments. Right. So like, what was the easiest thing to do after a doctor's appointment? Go to a McDonald's drive through and, and eat while I drive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's awful. Yeah. But it was, it became such, it was like a monthly thing. But it's not awful. So this is what, like, I want everybody to be really loving to themselves Mm. because you were doing what worked for you in a high stress circumstance, right? right? So what what I think we all have to honor is that the food is giving us something really important. In that moment, it was giving you energy because you're like, those sugary, salty, fatty foods give you bursts of energy. Yes, yeah. And it was saving you time. Right. Because you (laughs) had so much to do. (laughs) So it was really serving a very important need for you. So then I think the question we all have to ask ourselves is, okay, how can I get that need met Mm. in a different way? Um, So now do you find yourself carrying the foods that, that are just healthier for you around with you and meal prepping more? I take food everywhere, yeah. Okay. Because food is the single most important component. Yeah. And I'm no different than anyone else. If I get hungry and I have no time and I'm going to grab something, I'm going to make the a wrong choice, choice. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I always compare, like, if if you're trying to decide what to eat at the moment you're hungry, that's hand-to-hand combat. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. I don't want to be in hand-to-hand combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. would rather, like, have a good, like, security gate mm. where, like, the intruder's not coming into my house. Right? Wow. I don't want to be fighting them. Right, right, so right. So I, I try to avoid that situation. Okay. Oh, that's really good advice. Um, what do you do for your meal, meal prepping? Um, so it really depends on what's happening in my life. So mm-hmm. right now, we're preparing to move. We're moving on Monday. Oh, okay. You were wrapping up a two-year renovation. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So we're moving that's to exciting. our house. It's very exciting. But but like, I know I don't have the bandwidth for meal prep this week. Mm-hmm. And so my fridge is full of those, okay. even for my kids. Okay. Yep. So theirs look different. Like I got them like a chicken parm and a, a pasta and like, but everything in my fridge right now is already pre-cooked mm-hmm. um, because I know I don't have the space to do that this week. Right. But right. I still want to make sure I have food. Have Yeah. So it's a always that diet. calculation, you know? Okay. Now let's talk about your workouts. Mm-hmm. Um, you just came from SoulCycle this morning, yeah. which is so impressive. <laughs> um, what are some of the workouts that you do? So, like I said, I never worked out okay. prior to um, having my daughter. And I found an, a workout that I loved, which was SoulCycle. 
Um, I just kind of, I heard that one of my colleagues was doing it, and so I asked her about it, and then she connected me with the PR lady, and then she was like, yeah, come to some classes. Uh, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time that I really, really enjoyed exercise. Okay. Like, exercise for me was always a punishment. Yeah, yeah, It a was chore. like a chore. Like yeah. I did, it was like dragging a bag of rocks uphill. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, oh, I have to go to this thing. Yeah. Um, and this was the first time that it was really, really fun. Mm. And then I started to make friends with the instructors, with other people in class. And then it was even more fun because mm. now I had a peer group that I was looking forward to seeing and, you know, connecting with. And so that was my gateway drug. Okay. Because once I understood that that was possible, mm-hmm. you know, the, a lot of things you can't conceive until you see them. Yeah. Once I understood that, like, oh, I can love this. It can feel really, really good. Yeah. And I can meet people and it can be social. When you were a new mom, did you um, work out with the baby? No. Okay. I do not believe in working out with your kids. Okay. No, I see that happen. I see people running with the strollers and all that. that yeah. is like, if that's great for them, great. Or maybe it's out of necessity. Right, 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 Which right, like, right. I get that too. Yeah. I do not want to work out with my children. Okay. My workout, those are my time. Yes, 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 so, yes. No. I believe the same thing. <laughs> if you can, you know, have the child care, do that. Right. And then, yeah, take that one hour class uninterrupted. Yeah. yeah. It's just because it's, a, it's a, for me, it's mental more than anything. Right. That's why I keep going back. You know, yeah. it, it's like I sweat that shit out. And yes. then life is so much clearer and better after. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, your son and your daughter and what it's like. Oh, being a family my, they're for. so different. Yeah. And, you know, there's this great saying, um, we don't create our children, we meet them. Mm. And I really believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, I also don't believe that they belong to me. Yes. They belong to the universe and they are in my care. Right, right, right. But, the, you know, they are sovereign, independent little creatures. Mm-hmm. And I get so... It, it's so enriching and it's like everything to me to watch them grow and right. meet them right, and right. get to know them <laughs> because they're so different and they're so fun. Yeah. So it's it's Aww. great. My daughter is so persistent. She could teach a class in <laughs> persuasion. I mean, yes. so pers- relentless. Yeah. Um, where you're like, I'm not yielding, I'm not yielding, I'm not yielding. And then after like 15 minutes, you're like, fine. <laughs> Tell us an example of something she was that passionate about I mean, teaching. Uh, oh, she, I've had time. Okay. Um, oh, she's like negotiating and it's like, this oh is, yeah, but yeah. it's relentless. It's yeah. like, you know, you're like two more minutes, 10 more minutes, two more, and it's just, um, <laughs> you know, candy. Those right, right, right. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. But then be, to be able to master that negotiating right. sense at but age I lose seven. Every single yeah. time. She's really good at it. And I'm like, this is a lesson in persistence. Because she's heard no now. Right, right. 50 times from her mom, like the authority figure in her life. Right, right, right. she's unfazed. Oh, my goodness. So I'm like, okay, I could use a little more of that. (laughs) Because she's just going to keep going until she gets a yes. Yeah. And then my son is the exact opposite. He's the most chill, laid back, like... Easy breezy, whatever we're doing, he's like, okay, this is what we're doing, cool. Okay. He's just very mellow. So right. they complement each other perfectly cause, and they get along so well. Oh, that's so nice. It's so nice. They're yeah. like BFF. And I mean, we were just chatting about how, you know, our kids kind of humble us. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah, how, like, yeah. <laughs> they well, catch you off guard sometimes. You know, they're not impressed with what I do at all. Okay. Um, my, my daughter was showing a friend around our apartment and um, I had my Emmys on the mantle, the fireplace mantle. And mm-hmm. she says to the visitor, um, and these are mommy's soccer trophies. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, is that what she thinks they right, are? Right, right. So now my husband and I have this inside joke where it's like, you know, I'm very good at soccer. Right. right? Because I have all these trophies. <laughs> Um, you know, kids are not impressed. Yes. And there's yeah. something really nice about that. Right, 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 right. They it's don't so care. True. It's so true. You know, yep. t- t- like Michael Strahan is a very close friend. Like, mm-hmm. we'll be at his house and, like, my daughter will be playing with him. And, like, she does not care. Yeah, who, who he, he is. is. Yeah, exactly. She's, yeah. She does like, she just, like, can I sit in the purple chair? The purple chair is pretty. Like, that's yeah. all, like, that's all she cares about. <laughs> right. Oh, my God, that's so funny. That's really great. Yeah, and I, I think it's uh, it's something that we can definitely learn from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, Take a cue from. Yes, absolutely. There's so much to learn from kids. Yeah. So much to learn from kids. Their yes. imagination. Everything is play. Right. Everything is play. How often do we play? I know. Every I know. They turn everything into play. It's true. And so now I try, like, there are certain things that I consider play, like doing my makeup. Mm-hmm. So when I do that, I actually try to engage in that as play. Like, okay. that's fun for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, like, try to steal those moments of play. Oh, that's so they, nice. They play constantly. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's something that we can definitely learn from. Um, how has motherhood and your children 
changed you as a person? Oh, so too too many ways to. I remember asking mm-hmm. this question of someone before I had kids. Yeah, and she was like, "That's a hard one." She it was Jill Scott. Okay, who I adore. Yes, <laughs> and uh, she was like, "That's a hard one." She was like, "I'm gonna have to get back to you on that." Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny because there's this perception that motherhood softens you. Mm-hmm. It has softened me towards them. Right, right. But it has made me like. I'm a fucking animal when it comes yeah, to protecting exactly. of my course. family. Yes, like yes. I will fight a bear with my bare hands <laughs> and 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 not be afraid to. There you go. Yeah. So it has toughened me like nobody's business, and and with money too, because that's a resource for my family. Right. So I was never motivated by money before. Yeah. And now it's like no, fuck you, pay me because my yeah. kids need you're, you. You got to put food on their plate. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so that was surprising how like re- ruthless it made me. I like that. In service of them. Right, 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 uh, right. But that's that mama thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, don't mess with my family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, a, it's something so innate in all of us. Right. Um, what is kind of the legacy you'd like to leave behind for them? Ooh. Mm-hmm. You know, I just want them to feel loved and valued. Yeah. Like, that's so important to me that they mm-hmm. just feel loved and valued. And that starts with me. Like, I want right. to be an example of the purest love. Um, and I want to always be showing them their value. Right. So that that's kind of their baseline mm-hmm. for relationships. So yes. when they are not valued and not loved, they can walk away from those relationships. Wow. And because that's what I think we all want for ourselves. Right. Is the ability to see a circumstance and say, this is not on my level. Exactly. And I'm not accepting it. Exactly. So um, tell us about like a mom sense moment that you had. Oh, I have to think about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, what I've gotten very good at is is um, the ability to see that a, a disaster is about to happen. Okay. Like, and that took some years of honing. Yeah. But like when they're so about cool. to fall flat on their face and you like reach out and grab them by <laughs> yeah, a collar exactly. and you like just, and people are like, wow, good catch ball. Right, right. And it's like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that kind of thing, like predicting disaster or like when they're like about to spill the glass. Right, right, like, right. And you catch it right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and that's just because you've seen the glass fall 50 times. Exactly, like, yeah. Can... But that reflex is there, you yeah, know? Yeah. It's now time for Mom Hall when we share products we love. Do you have any Mom Hall items? So, Mom Hall meaning like any product that you're loving right now that could be beauty or parenting related, anything? So, it doesn't have to be baby related. Um, no, so no, I just... love, uh, you know, it's summer, mm-hmm. so I'm really big into like body shimmer. I did mm-hmm. not bring mine today. So my legs are like all dry, <laughs> no, but like, okay. I like them to be shiny and shimmery. Yes. So there's a Too Faced Royal Oil, mm. which I live by in okay. the summer. Nothing will make your skin look better. Oh, it nice. does transfer though, which is annoying. So you okay. sit on somebody's white couch, they're not going to be happy with Uh-oh, you. Like okay. I wouldn't sit there. Right. Okay. I would sit yeah. here. Yeah. 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 Um, and then it would get on your like dress it, it too? It will get on your clothes oh. if you get okay. it too close. So okay. Okay. It's not a perfect perfect product, but boy, do you look great. So like if you're at the, at the beach at the beach, the pool, right. yes, perfect. Mm, nice. Arms, I put it everywhere. I'd be like bathing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to remember that royal oil yeah. um, and we'll link to it. Let's not forget our quote of the day. Okay. And a lastly, a quote that you live by. Oh, I have a couple. Um, one that's big for me is I can handle it. So like not being afraid of something being too hard or too challenging or it, whatever it is, I can handle it. Mm. Just like confidence in your own strength. Right. Even in the face of the unknown. Um, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. So I try to stay prepared. Okay. And that's in a practical way. Like yeah. always have a bomb ass dress. Like right. in case you get a last minute invite right. to something right. fabulous, exactly. you know, like exactly. have a plan for yeah. those things. Yeah, yeah. Um, or like a great bathing suit, right. you know. Yeah, just you just never know. Stay ready. <laughs> I mean, you're staying ready with the meals too. It's right. It's like you don't know, you're going around the city. You don't know when you're going to get hungry and you have your fresh direct in your back. Yeah, stay prepared. Yeah. Stay prepared. So I'll go with those two. Okay, cool. Um, and... How can our listeners and viewers find you and your book? And- um, so Instagram is the easiest way. That's I'm not really active on any other social media. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's at Mara uh, Scampo, at Mara S. Scampo. Okay. Thank you so much, thank Mara. You. You're the best. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> 
I hope you enjoyed my interview with Mara. She's so down to earth and keeps it real, which is something I find to be really refreshing. I know I feel thin-spired to eat clean and start doing workouts that are fun for me. I enjoy high-intensity interval training and dance classes. What do you enjoy? Is it walking, running, spin, whatever that may be, work it into your schedule two to three times a week. It'll make a drastic difference in your energy levels and mood, and it'll make you a better mom because we need to fill ourselves up before we give to everybody else. If you're enjoying That's Total Mom Sense, leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Write to me at that's total mom sense at gmail.com and send me your questions. I'll be sure to answer them in a future episode. And remember, always trust your mom sense. Stay strong, super mamas. That's total mom sense.